is Jess from Peace Out Books and today I'm here with a highly anticipated video. If you guys know the title of this video, you know I'm here with a beginner's guide to historical romance. I have been reading a lot of historical romance lately ever since I co-hosted the historical romance readathon with my friends Lacey and Lisa. I'm also going to be referencing them at the beginning here for their guides they've done, which I'll get to in a second, but I love historical romances. I have a long way to go in terms of reading more authors and more books in this genre but I absolutely love it. One person asked me like why do you like historical romances and I just think it's the social expectations of the time and how that leads to a lot of angst in their relationships and then if women are going to get ruined because of the men and then do they have to get married because they were seen kissing each other and it's just great and I love the rakes and the dukes and the duchesses and it's so good and I love all the different settings that we have so I have a lot to share and um, I'm gonna go by where you should start and where you should go based on your preferences of what you want from your historical romances. So where you should start with historical romances, I'm gonna start off with probably the most popular historical romance author that I think most people start off with anyways and that's because I think her books are very approachable and very easy to read. I think people get scared of historical romances because they don't know if they'll understand the talk and the time period. These are not like Jane Austen. They, I mean, I love Jane Austen, but Jane Austen does take a lot more attention and focus because of the writing and the writing style, because Jane Austen's writing contemporary for her. And these historical romances, though, feel like you're reading something contemporary that just takes place in a past time, and they're funny. So what I have is the Girl Makes Duke series. These are out of order. I love this series. I've only read books one and two, but I know people love this whole series, and I need to read book two eventually. I just started with book three, then I made my way back. Most historicals you can also read as standalones. You should probably read them in order. I never do that, but this series is so much fun, and they're laugh out loud funny. In the first one, the Duchess Deal, our main character is a dressmaker and she makes this wedding dress for this woman who's about to marry this duke and she shows up with the, wearing the dress because she's like, I haven't got my money yet and apparently the wedding was called off. So the duke's like, hey, why don't you marry me? So that happens. It's marriage of convenience. And then we have the governess game, which I think just has to do with the governess. So I guess he has orphans and she is their governess to try to teach them how to be proper ladies. Haven't read this one yet. I will. And then in this one, our main character has like a plethora of animals and she loves them. They're like bizarre animals that you don't normally have as pets. And she lives at this estate and then this guy buys the house next door to try to uh, resell it for profit, but he knows nobody's going to want to live there if there's these annoying animals around. So they strike a deal where she's going to get rid of her animals if he helps her and they fall in love. So I love this series. Like I said, they're laugh out loud funny. If you enjoyed this series, I would also recommend Tessa Dare's Castle Ever After series. I've only read book two in the series, but I absolutely loved it. I gave it five out of five stars and I really want to read the rest. And the second one, it's Say Yes to the Marquess and the main character is engaged to this guy and he um, hasn't come around in eight years. So she's been engaged for eight years and she's like, you know what? I need to break off this wedding. It's supposed to happen in a month, finally. Will it? I don't know. And so she approaches the guy's brother and is like, you need to sign these papers for me so I don't have to marry your brother because I'm tired of waiting around and being a laughing stock of society. And so he's like, no, you can't do that. I'll plan the wedding for you. So he starts planning their wedding and he is just this rake and nobody takes him seriously and he's adorable and he's like, everybody wants me for the bad boy. And so he never thinks he's going to find someone to love and it's their romance and I absolutely loved it and it was funny as well. Not as like laugh out loud as these but I found myself laughing out loud in that one too. So if you want funny approachable historicals check out Tessa Dare and I will lead you to Lisa's video where she did a whole guide to Tessa Dare. We talked about all of her books so go ahead and check out Lisa's video if you're interested in Tessa Dare. I will say... I don't know if you guys know, a rake is a guy who's like a playboy who has a reputation for being with the ladies. That's okay in society back then. Men were allowed to be playboys, but if a woman was even found kissing a guy in public, she was ruined. So there's that whole dynamic as well. The other series I'm going to recommend to you is another beloved author here on YouTube when it comes to historicals, and that is Lisa Kleypas. If you want to start with Lisa Kleypas, I would say start with her... Wallflower series. I don't remember if it has a different name. I just know it's the Wallflower series. The first one is Secrets of a Summer Night. That's the only one I've read, but 
I have the whole series, I just have to get to them. These are about wallflowers. So a wallflower is someone who goes to the balls and the events and they always just stand on the wall. No men ever actually come and talk to them or want to dance with them and they never get picked. So they're kind of on their way to being spinsters. They're typically more shy and reserved and not like gorgeous and beautiful. They're the wallflowers. They're the ones that are looked over. And so in this one, the four wallflowers all decide that they want to help each other get married. And so in Secrets of Summer Night, it's our first girl. And I believe the rest are the different women. And this one, yeah, she is one of the Americans. So we ha sometimes have Americans come over from America to Europe in order to be a part of these books. These ones do take place in Europe and I will have a couple um, recommendations that are American and of other countries in Europe but these are really fun. If you, I love bookish wallflower characters. I don't know why but I really like that trope and the first book in this is really cute and I think these are very readable as well. I can't vouch for the rest of Lisa Clayfuss's books. I think I've only read three in the Ravenel series so I didn't start that series out and I think I've only really loved two of them in that series out of the three. I mean, I guess that's good, two out of three, but check out the Wallflower series first for Lisa Kleypas. If you're interested in Lisa Kleypas too, I know for sure Lacey has a recommendation video going through all of Lisa Kleypas' books, so if you're interested, check out Lacey's video going through all of them because she's read a lot of them. Lisa Kleypas, I think, is Lacey's favorite historical romance author, so Lacey knows what she's talking about. The next part of this video is going to be the old school historical romance authors. These are the ones that came out in the 80s and the 90s who I have read and would recommend. And these ones are a bit different than modern ones because they do have headstrong female characters, but there are oftentimes questionable consent in these. And so I know people have a lot of issues with the old school romances because the men often take when the woman says no, and sometimes it's implied that the woman is saying yes. I haven't run into any of the historicals where I'm like, wow, that was a really bad scene. I know that there are some books out there though, so keep that in mind when you check out the old school romances. But the ones that I'm going to recommend are ones that I didn't have any questionable scenes in that I absolutely loved. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend it. I have two authors that I've read for sure and then a couple that I can recommend to you that I haven't personally read but that I know are old school historical romance authors that people love that I need to read soon. If you guys follow me, you know probably who these two are. The first one is Joanna Lindsay. Unfortunately, Joanna Lindsay passed away this past year, which was very sad. But she's been writing since I think the 80s, if not the early 90s. My mom was reading Joanna Lindsay before I was born slash like when I was being born. I was born in 93. So my mom even told me I got 30 Joanna Lindsay books. Uh, I think I got like 20... 28 I think from eBay and my mom was like hey I like owned those back then and I was like why did you get rid of them? I would have taken them but little did she know that when her daughter turned 26 she was gonna be reading all the Joanna Lindsay. But Joanna Lindsay is very classic and this is the only one I've read by her. It's Hearts of Flame. It's a Viking romance which I've never read before. I absolutely loved it. This girl is from a Viking family so she is a Viking and she is determined to find a man she actually likes. So the very first scene I was concerned because it's like a guy trying to force himself on her and I was like please don't tell me this is our hero. It's not. She's not attracted to anybody in her village so she sneaks onto her brother's boat when they're supposed to be going on like a supplies run and it turns out they're actually going on a raid against her parents wishes and she just snuck onto a raid. So they end up all being captured or killed by the people they're raiding and she ends up being captured as well and it's her romance with the not the king but like the leader of the the clan that they tried to overtake and I absolutely adored it and I guess the, her parents also met because I think her mom was kidnapped by the dad and she's like the prisoner of the guy in this one so I can't wait to read her parents story in this series I think there's three books in this series so these are really good especially if you want something different because they're Vikings. I absolutely love this. Could not recommend it enough and I'm excited to read more Joanna Lindsay since I own like 30 of them now. The next one is Judith McNaught who is a new favorite author of mine who I really need to read more from. I have I think four other books of hers. I don't remember. Let me check when this came out. This one came out in 1989 so it's older than I am but I absolutely loved it. So our main character is living in a convent and she's kind of like the normal sister. Just like the boring 
not ugly but not pretty sister and she has her pretty sister who's there at the convent with her and her father's enemies end up kidnapping her and her sister to try to retaliate against her dad. She's very headstrong though so she tries to escape a bunch of times, tries to kill the guy who kidnaps her a bunch of times and it's their romance and it's so good and they actually do have to get married and you learn that in the first chapter that they get married and then you flash back to when he's kidnapping her and so you know they're gonna get married at some point so it's a marriage of convenience. I do think the ending of this went on a little too long but I still adored it so much. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I can't wait to read more by this author and so if you want an old school recommendation, Judith McNaught is where it's at. Two more authors that are old school that you might want to check out that I haven't actually read yet so I can't even tell you what these are about. Kathleen Woodlewis. I know there are a couple of her books that people are kind of questionable about the consent. I haven't actually picked up her books yet and I really want to. I think I own three. This one is The Flame and the Flower. And then we have Julie Garwood. I've heard The Secret is amazing. I don't know what it's about. I also have Gentle Warrior here because I bought these because the covers are really pretty. But I need to read these and I love how a lot of old historicals have like yellowed pages and I have one that's red edged too which is really cool but these are two authors that I think you guys would also like to check out if you are interested in the old school historical romances. I'm not sure like I said what they're about. I do know that this one is in the Scottish Highlands. Um, but I don't know. This one apparently is in England. So you just have to check out on the back to see where they're located and what they're about. The next category for these two authors is going to be if you like your angsty romances, these are the ones you want to pick up that are historical. So I love angsty romances. I love it when they're secret or when they're hurting or when they're determined not to love someone and they end up do loving them. I love angst. So I think that's why I'm obsessed with Kerrigan Byrne. Obsessed with her. I've read four of her books now. And I love them so much. They are very dark. So both of these begin, this one begins with our, I think they both begin actually where the main characters are almost sexually assaulted slash I think she is actually sexually assaulted in this one. And in this one, her childhood love kills the, I think it's like the headmaster of the school they're at or the orphanage. He ends up actually killing him because he was going to assault her. And that's why her beloved childhood sweetheart ends up being sent to a prison camp and dying there and so she runs into her beloved's best friend in the future and it's their romance and so this one's so good and she's still determined like to not be in love with anyone because she still goes by her beloved's last name because they had like a fake wedding when they were young because they were like so in love so this one is so good there's also marriage of convenience in this one I'm obsessed with this one and then in this one she ends up being the governess and she has to hide out because no one can know who she is she's trying to hide from someone because something horrible happened to her in the beginning so she was being locked up in like an insane asylum and she wasn't insane so things were bad at insane asylums back in the day but these are both so good. This one turned out to be a lot sweeter than I expected, but they both started out pretty dark, but could not recommend Kerrigan Burn enough. If you want angst, I would also recommend Sarah McLean, especially this book. I heard they're better if you read them in order, but I wanted to read a second chance romance, so I read this one. I think this is book two. This is book three. Okay, well, this one is a second chance romance between a married couple, and they were having issues in the beginning of their marriage, and some it has to do with infertility as well, so if that's at all a sensitive subject to you, make sure you know that going into here, but they haven't seen each other, I think, in like five years, and then they're reconnected in the he does a lot of groveling, which I know is Lacey's favorite, and tries to win her back, and it's super sweet and very angsty, though, because they're dealing with a lot of built-up emotions that they haven't dealt with in five years because they're mad at each other for what happened, and it's so good. I haven't read a lot more Sarah McLean books, so I think I've only read the second book in her Bare Knuckle Bastard series, but the book three comes out soon, and I own book one, so I have to read that, but I enjoy her books for some angst. I am obsessed with Outlander and so I love Scotland and I love any historical romance that takes place in Scotland and so if you want a Scottish historical and you like Outlander, even if you've only watched the show, In Bed with a Highlander I think is so good. It's a marriage of convenience with the leader of a Scottish clan and she is running away because she is like the secret daughter of this king and so like men are trying to hunt her down to force her to marry them to get her notoriety I guess and so she is kidnapped with this little boy whose uncle is in the clan who is the clan leader and so the little boy is 
saved. And he's like, save this lady, she's been nice to me. So they do, and she has to enter into marriage convenience with him, so people stop trying to marry her. And it's so good. She's so much like Claire from Outlander, so headstrong. She doesn't take crap from anybody, and she doesn't want to be this docile wife, and it's really good. There's a lot of uh, heart-pumping moments because people are still trying to come after her, even though she is married, and I really enjoyed it. I wasn't as big of a fan of book two in the series, but this one is so good, and I'm excited to read more from Maya Banks in this series, and she also has another Scottish series if you want to check it out. The last author I'm going to share that I have definitely read and recommend is going to be Beverly Jenkins, and this is if you like... American historicals. I'm not a big fan of American history. I definitely prefer European history and Europe in general to American historicals, but Beverly Jenkins is a black author and all of her books that I've read so far, which is only two, but deal with black main characters living in the 1800s during that time in America. And so I've read Forbidden and I think I've read Destiny's Embrace. And so this one, our main character female is black and she moves because she wants to start cooking and live a life of her own and ends up in this town and kind of falls for this guy who is just like the good guy in town. He has political standing. Everybody loves him. He has a lot of business and he's white passing. No one knows that he's half black and there's a very sad story to how he was actually born. And they fall in love and he's like, I can't be with a black woman without accepting my black side. And so the, all of her books deal with race and what it's like to be black in America during that time. And they have really great romance as well. I liked Destiny's Embrace more. That one's about our main character who works at her mother's dress shop and her mother's very abusive. So she runs away and is the servant not servant, but like maid, I guess, to this guy because his mom hired her because she's like, you need someone to help keep the house up, you know, and they butt heads immediately and they're both black and they start fighting all the time and end up falling in love. So it's like kind of a hate to love situation. I really enjoyed that one. And so if you like race being a major issue that is addressed in these books in America, I think you would love these. I enjoyed Beverly Jenkins and I can't wait to read more from her. The next one, I have not read this author, but it's also a historical romance that takes place in America, specifically New York, so I have a feeling this is going to be very different than Beverly Jenkins because hers take place in the West, like near California. So Joanna Shoup writes the Uptown Girl series, and I have not read this one, but I do have an arc of book three, so I wanted to read this one. Book three comes out June 30th, and they take place in New York like I said so I think they have more to do with like high society because Beverly Jenkins there are no balls and um, social events like the European historicals are there might be just not the two that I read but in the American one I think in New York it'll be kind of like high society in Europe just in America and just a little different I'm assuming so I'm really excited to read these I don't know the plots of them because I haven't read them but uh, Joanna Shoup is an author I really want to try out and I'm excited to read New York at this time period as opposed to Out West. An old school author I would recommend going in keeping in mind that it's harder to read is Loretta Chase. People absolutely love Lord of Scoundrels. I had a hard time getting into this because it's just the writing wasn't as easy to get into as a lot of these other authors are, but people are obsessed with this book. If you really want to read this because you think you'll like it, go for it. I just had a hard time getting, I think through the first hundred pages it was really hard for me to focus, but this one's about Jessica and her brother is getting into um, bad things with this rake and so she attempts to intervene and says stop drag my brother around and helping him get into bad situations like stop it and that ends up being the person that she kind of falls for and they have to enter into a marriage of convenience because of some misunderstanding and they both think it's each other's fault and it's really good. Jessica's a very headstrong character which I absolutely love. I like women who stand up to the men and don't really cower, I guess. Like I said, this was harder for me to get into, so I did give this four stars, but people say this is their favorite of all time, so if you're interested, check this out. And the rest of the authors I'm going to talk about are ones I have not personally read yet. I'm not going to have a synopsis for any of these, but they are authors that are on my radar that I think you guys might want to check out too. The first one is Susan Enoch. Suzanne Enoch? Suzanne Enoch, I think is how you say that. But I specifically wanted these because the cover for the new book dropped in I'm obsessed and they're Scottish romances and they have puns as titles so we have it's getting Scott in here and Scott under the covers 
I love, like I said, Highlander romances, and so when I saw this series and that book four, I think, is coming out, it might be book three, I don't remember, I'll have to check, but I was really interested in these. I did also order some older Suzanne Enoch books that I don't know if they're like early 2000s or late 90s, but I bought those as well, so I really want to try out this author for some historical Scottish settings. Then I picked up Vivian Lorette. There's an annoying sticker on there that I have to try to get off, but I don't know much about her, but I've seen her around a lot, and I think I have her new book that I got as an arc from Avon that I haven't read yet, but I'm excited to try her out. I also have Janna McGregor. This is a pretty long series. I think this one is book like four. This might be book five. I don't know, but her new one I think is Wild Wild Rake. It's purple. That came out recently, so I saw this at Half Price Books in perfect condition, so I picked it up, and I'm a sucker for a yellow cover. I love this. Can't say anything about her as an author, but I have that. And then one I've also seen around is Kate Bateman. I have this Earl of Mine. I've seen these around a lot, and a lot of people have told me that this one's really good, and it has pretty high rating. I think it almost has a four-star rating on Goodreads, so... I really am excited to try this out. Then there is Sophie Jordan, who I know Lisa has really enjoyed Sophie Jordan. She says that they're really steamy and fun historicals, so I'm very excited to try Sophie Jordan out. I have a couple of her books. I think she's often on Book Outlet, which is where I got a couple of hers. And the last one I really want to try out is Eva Lee. I know hers are also on Book Outlet often, and so I think I got this one too, but I've heard really fun things about her. Her covers are gorgeous, so I buy them, and I need to read her. And that is my guide to historical romances. I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope you can find a place that you want to start. If you need any more recommendations, let me know. I do know, like, Eloisa James is a popular author. Lorraine Heath is super popular. But I wanted to recommend you historicals that I absolutely fell in love with, that I couldn't get enough of, that are engaging and not that intimidating and are easy to get into. I know historical romances seem very intimidating, but they're a lot of fun. So... Make sure you check out these books, make sure you check out these authors, and let me know down below who your favorite historical romance authors are. I would love to find some more. And your favorite historical romance books, let me know. And that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching, and have a good day. Bye.